we're here to put Britain back on the food map. We're on a mission to save fantastic British produce from extinction. But we need your help. Essential ingredients that have been here for centuries are in danger of disappearing forever. Together, we want everyone to get back to British culinary basics. And help us revive our fabulous... Magnificent! Mouth-watering! Unique! And utterly delicious food heritage. Great British Food Revival is back. My name is Raymond Blanc. I'm completely passionate about food, about cooking, and of course about fresh ingredients. For too long, we have taken the produce grown closest to us for granted. I really feel that the British consumer can create a small revolution with the farmers, with the chefs, with the retailers to create a food chain which is responsible. I want to help Britain rediscover one particular fresh produce. I'm going to focus to a fruit which is very, very close to my heart, the plum. Plums have been cultivated in Britain for over 2,000 years, but today we are importing four times the amount we produce. UK plums production is falling. In an effort to revive this wonderful food, I will be asking growers where they are leaving their plums to rot. I'm not going to grow a crop where I cannot guarantee a profit on. And I will be getting stuck in making pork pies with plums. I show you, OK? I'm a very competitive <laughs> man, don't you dare, OK? And I'll be in the revival kitchen showing you what amazing and delicious things can be done with plums. Bon appétit. I may have been born in France, but I work and live in Great Britain. And it was in Seas Garden that I first learned about the diversity of great British produce. My garden is vital to me in my cooking, but it wasn't always as well maintained as the garden you see today. When I first bought this house, it was actually pure wilderness. There were grand elder everywhere. It was just a jungle and dead Brussels sprouts, as big as that, looking at me in a disapproving manner. I was very scared of that space. And, took, and I put my papa on it. And it took him eight months to clear it up, to prepare it. And a year after, we created the garden here. I'm very proud of it. It's the very heart of my cooking, completely. In, in that little kingdom here, that's where everything starts. I am currently expanding the gardens to include a spectacular orchard. I've already planted a thousand trees and in the spring I would be planting plum trees. For me it is so exciting to know that from April we will have all these new plum trees in the orchard. By the end of this program I want all of you planting at least a tree in your own home and I will give you the recipe how to cook those plums. Promise. But while I'm planting plum trees, the rest of the country, actually, are pulling them up. Incredibly, Britain has lost 65% of its plum orchards over the last 25 years. In the same period, the number of imported plums has more than doubled. Supermarkets sold their plums from abroad. We must rediscover the huge variety and great taste of British plums. Together, we can restore the plum as an important part of our national heritage. Before its taste is a lost memory. I think the British plum are fantastic. And there are so many varieties that you can accommodate in your cooking, okay? And I think we should save them. We need to look after them, we need to protect them. You need to help me to save it. To start my revival, I'm heading to a centre for British plum growing, the Vale of Evesham. Here, plums have been an important part of the landscape since the 14th century. Like many places in Britain, the Vale has lost 80% of its orchards since the Second World War. 
for those that survive, the threat of destruction is as serious today as it has ever been. Paul Dansby has been growing plums all of his life, but today his crop is not worth the price of picking and it's left to rot on the orchard floor. I grow fruit for a living. It is my bread and butter. I am not going to grow a crop where I cannot, uh, as much as possible, guarantee a return, a profit on. How many, how many acres of plums did you have way back in the 90s? We up to 50 acres at one time. And now? Two. Two. And, and two more? If my son has his way, they'd be all out tomorrow. Once sold for jams and preserves, today the only market left for British plums is a fresh market. But selling to retailers has highlighted a problem with a British plum, the British weather. When the plum tree wakes up yeah. after the winter, yeah. it comes into blossom mid-April. You've only got to get four or five degrees of frost between then and June, it can do tremendous damage. In 89 and 90, we had 5% and 7% of a crop. 90% of the plums in the variation disappeared in those two years, and because you can't live on nothing. And you have, have you got any subsidies from government here? No. No, no at all. No. So the British growers are really left high and dry when yep. they have to fence for themselves. This inconsistency of supply was not acceptable to the supermarkets. Had two years with no plums, and the third year they say, well, you didn't supply us with plums last year, you didn't supply us with plums the year before, why should we come and support you now? We've got the plums from France that we've reasonably satisfied with, um, we'll carry on that way. So you're saying, when there's a frost, okay, and your harvest is whipped out, okay, you, have, you can't you can't your losses, yeah. but after, they should come back to you, should they? Well, I hope if they would, any... I hope they would because they want to support the British grower and know the mm. British fruit is better. Only in Britain would you place reliability of a quality, heritage and locality. But things are changing. Consumers, chefs, retailers says, you know, are reinventing our food culture and we want to grow our own food from our own region, our local food, to support our local growers. And I think this is a big change at the moment. moment, the moment. And I, I just hope you're right. Is there any way to benefit of that? How to, try to, how, to, how to create which kind of movement we could create so these trees can be there tomorrow and for the, for, for the next century? What can we do? I, I wish I knew. I wish I knew. I think food now is not separated from our culture. It is part of our culture, part of our consciousness, and that is new. I'm not a pessimist. I think. The British revival of, of plums will be there, will happen. I want to show you what a fantastic ingredient plants can be. My first recipe is a perfect way to preserve the veil of Yvesham plums. I'm going to cook a very simple rustic country pâté with a fantastic plum chutney. It's very rare you will see a Frenchman cooking a chutney, never mind a wonderful plum chutney. That's pretty rare, hope you enjoy it. So I'm going to take a nice big fat chopping knife here. Ooh la la, dangerous thing. Carefully chop an onion. And believe me, the skill of a chef is not measured by how fast he cuts his onion. Grate some fresh ginger, then put a gentle heat. Voila. Add cinnamon, star anise, and cardamom seeds. I'm converting the starch of the onions into sugar. Meanwhile, as well, all the spices in here, the ginger, the star anise, create a gentle interchange, exchange of flavors. That's perfect. Add sugar and vinegar to act as a strong preservative. And you can keep this chutney for years to come, for your grandchildren to enjoy it. Put a date on it and say, I have done it. I, Raymond, I have done it, or Charles, or Maggie, or whatever. Then prepare the fruit. Start with apples, leaving the skin on. The apples are there to support the flavor because the dominant fruit, of course, is a plum. The plum is much more, has got actually more character and certainly more acidity. Stone the plums, 
then add all the fruit to the pot. Beautiful taste of autumn, beautiful smell, beautiful colors. You cook it between one hour and a half, two hours, all the fruit will collapse, the flavors will merge into a fantastic, rich, plummy, delicious chutney. Leave the pot uncovered and stir every 10 minutes until the fruit has a jammy consistency. So now what you have to do now is to pot it. And I love this kind of food that you can prepare, that you cook during the summer and enjoy during the winter. It's, it's, it's reenacting a very old ritual. That's how we used to it. And there's something so beautiful and almost sentimental. I get very emotional okay, about this. I'm serving my chutney with a simple pâté. Plum chutney here, okay, ready to be served with my pâté de campagne. And there you have magic. Really, you have magic. Simple magic. Bon appétit. I'm staying in the Vale of Evesham to visit another plum orchard, but this one is backing the trend. You'll find no plums rotting here. The grower here is buying up plum trees to increase production. He clearly has a positive view of the future of British plums. I am meeting the man in charge, Bob Bird. These are less and less plum orchards in this country. That's a fact. That, that is a fact. But you seem yourself to have bought orchards, plum orchards. So what is the secret of your success? I would like to know. I've always worked on the principle in my business life that if lots of people are getting out of a particular product, then that's a good time to go into the product. So mm -hmm. I looked at ways and means that we could capitalise on the fact that lots of people were going out of plum growing and that there was surely a demand for good quality British plums. Bob's plums have a significant advantage over the competition. We have a huge sales business, mm -hmm. behind us, which sells produce from land's end to John O'Groats every, so, every, every day so of the week. So what you're doing now, what you are effectively We're doing, you're producing, the whole of the UK. you are producing, you are marketing, and you are delivering your produce. We are indeed. We're, we're, yeah. we're doing what the smaller mm -hmm. Evesham grower in particular was not able to do. It is reassuring to know there is still a market out there for this great British fruit. But I cannot forget Paul's plums rotting on the orchard floor. So many small producers have gone against the walls, they've lost their business. So is there a future for, for plum, British plums? I'm backing my faith in the future of the British plum by showing you that we are actually planting orchards. This orchard was planted about 12 years ago. We're actually going to plant another seven acres this autumn because we fervently believe that it is a great product. Mm. I mean, when you look, at oh. that, when you see every plum at over 40 oh, millimetres, no, no. Look at that. looking absolutely yeah. beautiful That's and lovely. You, you know, it yeah. is a great product. It eats well, it looks well. I think you don't have to convince me. I'll be certainly the one who will go up there, OK, and tell, pass the message, pass the message to my chefs, pass the message to a consumer, pass the message to anyone who will want to listen to me. When I see food this beautiful, I must photograph it. There we are. Show me your <laughs> beautiful plums. Yes, right. There we are. <laughs> uh, beautiful. Voilà, great. Voilà. Wonderful fruits. You know, all what you want to do is to cook them. Yep. You know? yep. Cook yep. them, plum them, puree them. Plum revival is not just based on how we grow our plums, but how we use them and how we create a demand. I'm meeting a lady who, like Bob, is taking the taste of Evesham plums to the nation. Lucy Rollette sold 30,000 bottles of juice from her little van last year. And it is a pear show plum pressé that is one of her best sellers. It started off as a, as a hobby, then it went into a business because we kept, kept, just kept growing and growing. And now part of, our, of what we do is about drinks that shape our landscape. It's lovely to work with local growers, to have fresh plums that haven't travelled miles. I can go and pick the plums Good and they come in fresh that morning. And all yeah. that is really part of our business, yeah. which is lovely. Lucy is really celebrating this wonderful food. And as a local girl, she's also celebrating her home. I grew up playing in orchards and it's one of my loveliest childhood memories. Mm. So to go back and pick plums in an orchard is just one of the best jobs I, I ever do.